Greetings in the name of peace. I will be going over types in shadows. I'm going to deal with David being a type in shadow of Mohammed. Peace and blessings be upon him. And I will be going over types and shadows of other important Bible characters. It is imperative that you know these types and shadows. For instance, God said in Deuteronomy 18, 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. So there, right there, we see that there is a type in shadow right there. Moses was a type in shadow of the coming Deuteronomy 18.18 18 prophet. And we're going to go over that as well. But just off rip. Beginning this message. I wanted you to see how important. That God wanted the children of Israel to know. That he was going to raise up a prophet. That was like Moses. And now we're going to go over some similarities. Similarities of David in Mohammed. David was famous for the women singing his song. Saul has slain his thousands and David is tens of thousands. So he's famous for the ten thousands. Mohammed as well, peace be upon them both. He is famous for the ten thousand the 10,000 Muslims when he entered into Mecca. 629 December, all right? That was history. That was history. And the 10,000s follow them both. And it's very important because let me get some scripture. Because I want to validate every claim that I am saying. This is going to be in Deuteronomy 33, verse 2. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, and verse 2. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand with a fiery law for them. So we see right here in this scripture that God is describing his three greatest prophets. He's coming from Sinai. That was Moses. Then he rose up from Seir. That is Jesus. And he shined forth from Mount Paran. That is Mohammed. Peace be upon him. And he's continuing talking about Mohammed because he says and he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand that is the Quran went a fiery law for them so there you see Moses had a covenant and then guess what Moses passed that covenant on to the next lawgiver, and that was Shiloh or Mohammed, peace be upon him. And his law has different laws. Some of them are the same, but it's been modified because the children of Israel failed. They corrupted the text. And so God had to reestablish a law that would endure forever. And that law is the Quran. And that was given by Mohammed, peace be upon him. So there. That's why the ten thousands is important. And that's why I'm approved to you that David is a type in shadow of Mohammed. They both have the ten thousands following them. Then let's go up to Song of Solomon. Chapter 5, verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousands. Going back up to my beloved. Now we know that the word beloved actually is the name for David. David name means beloved. Is white and ruddy. Now we know this is describing the prophet. 
peace be upon him, because his face was neither fleshly nor plump, but it had a roundness, rosy white. Okay, so we know this is describing the prophet perfectly why those who hate it just want to be in denial. They in denial. But let's continue to go on. The chiefest among ten thousands. When David conquered Goliath, all right, it was exactly as if he conquered ten thousand men. All right. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he entered into Mecca, he was chiefest among the ten thousand. All right. And he didn't conquer a Goliath like David. But what did he do? He conquered the idols. He conquered the Trinity, which is equal to the Goliath. All right. In the Quran, we have scriptures literally destroying the Trinity. 573. Those who say Allah is one in a Trinity have certainly fallen into disbelief. There is only one God. If they do not stop saying this, those who disbelieve among them will be afflicted with a painful punishment. That's what David came with. He came with a rock. And when he said, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. What was he saying? You coming to me with that Bible. You coming to me with that spear or that spirit stuff. Always talking about it's the spirit. And a shield because a shield represents God. Because God told Abraham, I am thy shield. Thy exceeding great reward. So he was destroying the Trinity right there. He was destroying the Trinity right there when David came on the scene with the stone, with the rock, with the Quran in his hand. So you tell me that David is not a type in a shadow of Mohammed. Peace and blessings be upon him. One man, only one man, solo man, solo man, only one man in history destroyed the Trinity, the Christian church. He destroyed the idol of ten thousands. He destroyed it. He destroyed the Goliath, which is the Christian church. But I just want to stay on this same topic that when it says, my beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousands, that is describing the prophet. If we keep going, his hair was black. It's going through all the descriptions of the prophet. Like I told you, his face was not plump, okay? It was round, and his cheeks were rosy. Verse 13, his cheeks are as a bed of spices. This is exactly describing the man, all right? And when we go back up to verse 10, that word chief is going into how these stones, which the builders rejected, the same has become the chief cornerstone. So the nation that was rejected and Ishmael was rejected. Him and his mom was cast out. Now they have been selected. All right. As the nation that would bear his law. Just like the Beni Israel. God's two eyes is what I like to call them. Isaac and Ishmael. Isaac had a lawgiver and Ishmael had a lawgiver. And we know that that lawgiver was Moses that descended from Isaac. And the final lawgiver was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from Ishmael. The problem is you fail to give this man the respect he deserves. God spoke briefly. Of Moses and of Jesus. But he went into detail with Mohammed, peace be upon him. It says, and he came with ten thousands of saints. 
From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Why was the law fiery? Because this is the law that was preserved and it will remain with you forever. This is what Jesus was telling his disciples of the comforter. That he would remain with you. I have to emphasize this. I have to keep it real. And I got to make it simple and plain. The Bible says that he is chief. Chief of the ten thousands. Jesus went more further in detail and said that the stone that the builders rejected. The same has become the chief cornerstone. This is Mohammed. Peace be upon him. You got to understand that this is the last and final messenger. So you know God couldn't go soft. He had to put a figure of a man that would be well represented as the final messenger. And y'all need to stop being fake. And give the man his credit. That he deserves. This was God's choice. Of a ruler. God's choice. Saul. Was man's choice. David. Which is a type of Mohammed. Was God's choice. Of a ruler. That's when Israel messed up asking for a king to rule over them. It would have never even been this way. Had they been content to just let God rule over them. But because they wanted a man to rule over them. God picked out a ruler for the house of Israel. And it's none other than the prophet Mohammed. Peace be upon him. Give him the credit where the credit is due. Going on. To the types and shadows. We understand that David is famous for the ten thousands. Mohammed is famous for the ten thousands. David comes from the tribe of Judah. Meaning praise. Mohammed's name means praise worthy. David was a shepherd. Mohammed was a shepherd. David and Solomon built civilizations. Mohammed built his own civilization. Now, this was something that Jesus did not do, peace be upon him. And that's why most people do not believe him to be the Deuteronomy 1818 prophet that study. Not talking about the simple ones, okay? I'm talking about the ones who really study. And we actually have Christian scholars who literally say the only person of history who can be remotely compared to to Moses is Mohammed. All right. That's a Christian scholar who said that. All right. That is James L. Dow. Solomon, who was a son of David, his name means peace. Mohammed is the one we say peace be upon him too. That whole way was introduced to us. Through the religion of Islam. All right. He is also the Shiloh. So Shiloh means peaceable one. He is the Shiloh. He is the last lawgiver. Moving on. David considered himself a flea or a dead dog. And that's in scripture. Mohammed was a Gentile. All right. He was not an Israelite. David was in the wilderness of Paran. Mohammed was in Paran where the city Mecca is. And Paran is only in the Bible 11 times. So what are the odds of David, the man of ten thousands, being in the same land as the prophet Mohammed, peace be upon him, in the land of Paran, in the city where Mecca is? David was also called Amen. Muhammad should remember David. This is in 3817. 
Be patient over what they say and remember our servant, David, the possessor of strength. Indeed, he was one who repeatedly turned back to God. So here we have God speaking to the prophet, telling him to remember himself. Why? Because like I've been telling you, David is a type of in shadow of the prophet Muhammad. I pointed this out earlier in my videos that David's house had issues with women sexually. David committed adultery. All right. And remember that word adult is in adultery. All right. And Muhammad has a reproach because they say this woman he was married to was not an adult this stuff is so serious we got to respect the messenger he's in all the scriptures i thoroughly believe that he is in all the scriptures to those who have knowledge and god knows more he knows what we don't know but the glimpse that he's showing I can see glimpses of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and these scriptures I'm bringing out to you. And there's more. There's more. So we see that the prophet has been told to remember David. David hid in the cave. Muhammad hid in the cave. Muhammad hid in the cave. When there was a huge spider in the way and he hid in the cave, he hid there. David was hiding in the cave, running from Israel's king, Saul. What are the odds of them both being in the caves? David spent a lot of time in the caves. Saul and David was having war with one another in the cave area. David wanted water. So three of David's mighty men broke through the Philistines lines to get him water. And David would not drink it. And this is a rebuke for you Christians taking communion. Oh, I got something for you. David would not drink that water. You know why? Because he said it would be like drinking the blood of these men. And so he poured it out as a drink offering. But yes, both David and Mohammed hid in the cave from their enemies. All right. I want to go to Surah 27, 76 through 77. Indeed, this Quran recounts to the children of Israel most of the way they differ about. And it is indeed a guidance and mercy for the faithful. This is the Quran. He's telling us this book is a guidance. It recounts what the children of Israel differed about. So we know there's types and shadows in this. We know there's types and shadows. Also, I want to go over some more types and shadows of David and Mohammed. And I also want to include Moses because it's been well established that Moses is a type and shadow of the prophet Mohammed. Peace be upon them all in Deuteronomy 18. They all received books from Allah. Moses received the book of the Torah. We know that David received the book of Psalms and that is detailed in the Quran. And Muhammad, he received the Quran. So these all have books. Not all the prophets have books, y'all. So when I'm saying David is a type and shadow of Mohammed, it's not just words. This stuff has been confirmed. They all migrated in Allah's cause. All right. They all had 
powerful enemies in which God gave them victory. They had struggles as well as successes, all three. They all were permitted in jihad. They all had wives and children. They all had normal births. All right. Now we know that Moses and David and Mohammed all were raised by someone other than their parents. Now when I say David, because David went into Saul's army as a boy. He wasn't even old enough to be in the army. All right, so he was being raised by the army of King Saul. And we know that Moses, he was raised as an Egyptian. All right, and it's the same thing with the prophet Mohammed. If we keep going, we'll see these men were all shepherds. They were all shepherds, all three, David. Moses and Mohammed. That is amazing. All right. We know they all were supported by the angel Gabriel. They all were supported by companions. Okay. And they were all dwellers of desert. All right. And we know that Moses and Mohammed were first frightened when they received their first revelation. From God, And if we read through the book of Psalms, we know that David would express these same feelings. All right. This is all types and shadows. David sent messengers unto Nabal. David sent comforters on behalf of himself concerning Hanan's father. Jesus sent the comforter on behalf of himself concerning the father so even when we look at the first time comforters is mentioned in the bible we went over how this was david's way of sending kindness in which it was put to total shame and it's the same thing today jesus sending the comforter mohammed and the children of israel the christians they are Treating it as nothing. All right. They just want to go to his sexual relationships. They just want to go into his marriageable issues. David and Solomon both had these issues with women. And the prophet, peace be upon him, he did not have these issues with women. But he has that reproach. All right. He has that reproach of the women. And I brought this out to you in an earlier broadcast, but I will go over that scripture of Abigail. God took away that reproach. And this is going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 39. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, blessed be the Lord. That have pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and have kept his servant from evil. So we know that God kept the messenger from evil. For the Lord have returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. So all these people that saying all this negative stuff about the prophet peace be upon him and his marriageable issue, God is returning that right back on your own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail or a baby gal to take her to him to wife. All of that has been justified. The Most High already foreseen the reproach that would be upon him. And the Lord kept his servant from all evil and what they differed about. So going on to these types and shadows, I have so much more. And I'm not going to rush this broadcast. I want to go over another Bible character. This is going to be Joseph. All right. I just want to just tell you some similarities and how Joseph was a type and shadow 
of Jesus Christ. And that's why for those who are listening, you need to stop believing that Jesus was crucified because he didn't die. He's alive. All right. And I want to bring out the similarities. This is going to be between Joseph and Jesus. Joseph and Jesus were both sold for silver. Genesis 37, 28, Matthew 26, 15. Stripped of their clothing. Genesis 37, 23, Matthew 27, 28. Bound. Genesis 39, 30, Matthew 27, 2. And condemned with two other criminals. Genesis 40, 1 through 3. Luke 23, 22 through 23. One of whom received life and the other death. Genesis 40, 20 through 23. Luke 23, 39 through 43. Getting back to the types and shadows. There's more on that. I just want to go over briefly because there's probably about 60 similarities in between Jesus and Joseph. Joseph was a shepherd. Jesus was a shepherd. Joseph was loved by his father. Jesus was loved by his father. They both lived in honor. Joseph had a great moral lifestyle. Jesus had a great moral lifestyle. Joseph was hated by his brothers. Jesus was hated by his brothers. Joseph was sent by his father to his brothers. Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Joseph's brothers plotted to kill Joseph. The Jews also plotted to kill Christ. Joseph's brothers teased him. The Jews teased Jesus. That is so true. Joseph was stripped. We went over that. Jesus was stripped. Um, Joseph was sold into Egypt. Jesus was betrayed and handed over to the Jews by Judas. Joseph was sold for the price of redemption. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. All right. Joseph became a servant. Jesus became a servant. Philippians 2 6. If you want to go by that reference, Joseph was a prosperous servant. Jesus also was a prosperous servant. He was the Messiah, highly honored in this life and in the life next to come. Joseph was sorely tempted by Potiphar's wife. Jesus was tempted and did not sin. Joseph was falsely accused. Jesus was falsely accused. Jesus was jailed with prisoners. Joseph was jailed with prisoners. Joseph was 30 years old. Jesus was 30 years old. And if we was to add to Joseph and Jesus, um, we know that Joseph was an Israelite, but he ended up being down with another nation. All right. He married into another nation and he was a part of another nation. And it's the same thing with Jesus. He sent the comforter, Mohammed, peace be upon him, who was of another nation. And so Jesus is an Israelite, but he is down with Ishmael. Oh, yes, he is. It's true. He said, you shall be hated by all nations. Who is hated by all nations today? Ishmael. Ishmael is hated by all nations on a higher scale than even the black man. All right, because Ishmael is that man that when he gets on the plane, <laughs> everybody is looking his way, especially if he carrying some type of bag. OK, Ishmael is hated by all nations. So for my brothers and sisters out there that believe that Jesus was crucified and you believe he died, you need to reconsider all these types and shadows of Joseph and Jesus being similar. Joseph did not die. It was a big lie. All right. And the Quran exposes um, the falsehood of the Bible. And it makes the bold claim that Jesus was not crucified. So don't believe these Israelites that lie and say, oh, the Quran doesn't have any prophecy. No, we have true prophecy. We make the bold claim 
and we say that Jesus was not killed or crucified. All right, that's both. All right, we need to reconsider these things. Also, remember, remember Jonah. Remember Jonah. Jonah did not die. He was alive. And Jesus said, you want a sign? I'll give you the sign. Just like Jonah, just like Jesus. When Jesus returned, he is going to have a fiery preaching just like Jonah did. All right, coming out of the mouth of the whale or the belly of the fish, however you put it. Jesus coming out of the heavens. He's going to destroy the cross. He's going to destroy these pigs. He's going to get rid of this tax. Yes, he's going to preach that bidding that the Father want him to preach. So there you have types and shadows that will help you with your faith. Jonah was not killed. Joseph was not killed. All right. It looked like it. It looked like it, but it wasn't true. And that's exactly what the Quran says. It was made to appear to them, but it was not. Moving on to the types and shadows, because we have, we can talk about types and shadows all day. Moses, all right, he is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. He will be from among the brethren, all right? He will be like Moses. He will speak the words and commands put in his mouth by God, and he will speak in God's name. Muhammad and Moses both did that. They both did that. Going on to the similarities of Muhammad and Moses, they both was about 40 when they received the revelation. They both was shepherds. So they both had families, wives. Um, they both were born naturally. That's why you can't let nobody lie to you when they try to tell you that uh, Jesus is the messenger of Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. That's not true. Mohammed is. So I hope this increases your faith. We went over the types and shadows of Mohammed being played through David. We went over Joseph and Jesus. We went over Moses and Mohammed. And there's more. There's so many types and shadows. There's types and shadows of Jonathan being a type of Jesus. And this is because the people wanted to kill him after he ate the honey from the end of his rod, his staff, out with the army of Saul. He was supposed to be put to death, Jonathan. But what did the people say? Not one hair on his head will touch the ground. And the Bible literally says, and the people rescued. First time rescued is mentioned in the Bible is when Jonathan was rescued from the death of King Saul. And that King Saul goes into like the law because it was an oath and he had everybody fasting, which was a dumb choice to have the people fasting while they were fighting. He was so afraid to fight. And Jonathan, his son, was a greater warrior than even his own dad. And so he breaking that oath. He was supposed to be put to death, speaking of Jonathan. And the people rescued Jonathan. Just like the angels rescued Jesus. The devil knew this. The devil knew this. That's why he said, it is written of the, the angels will protect you. And Jesus said it's also written. So he didn't disagree. He knew. And the devil knew. That's why they say the devils believe and tremble. There's types and shadows of Saul being a type of Antichrist. Him being a type. That's why you got to beware of Paul, whose name used to be Saul. Uh, Saul also is a type of the nation of Israel as a whole. Uh, he is also a type of the ex-anointed. Israel is the ex-anointed. They used to be anointed. Um, so these types and shadows will help you with your faith. Mohammed indeed is the last and final messengers. As I was at work today, 
I had this thought come to my mind that there are no more prophets, but there are still servants. And I encourage you to be that servant of Allah, be that slave of Allah. It's so awesome knowing that it's not about you. God has sent his last and final messenger. And all we have to do is recite the Quran, expose the devil, and be about the truth. That's all we have to do. Peace, my brothers. Peace.